Box of Nation. There will be so many. Ladies. USA! 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 Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So USA continues to be the most dominant force in the sport of boxing. There is no other country on the planet that has as many dominant fighters in the sport than America does. This has been true since the inception of the sport and is true today after Jamel Charlo just became undisputed in one of the most deepest divisions, I would say top two, one of the most deepest divisions in the sport of boxing, stopping the very game. One of the toughest fighters in boxing, Brian Castaño. You know, me as new media, we had our reporter ask Brian Castaño at the press conference, is Jamel Charlo the hardest puncher that you've ever faced and how would you rate his power on a scale one to 10? This was the question before this fight. This was once again, this week leading up to the fight. And he tried to downplay Charlo's power. He said, it wasn't Charlo that was the hardest puncher I faced. It was a Puerto Rican guy because he knocked me down. And that was his reason why he was saying that that was the hardest puncher he had ever faced, the guy that knocked him down. Well, Charlo just knocked you out. This fight was very competitive. It was candidate for fight of the year. They were both going back and forth. What I'm really impressed with is when it comes to Jamel Charlo's chin, his durability, but most importantly, his ability to adjust. Jamel Charlo, he was doing a lot of smart things in there. Uh, compared to the first fight, this time he was willing to fight a little bit more on the inside. In the first fight, Jamel, when his back touched the ropes, Jamel would stand up high. In the rematch, he got down low with Brian Castaño. And soon as Brian let his hands go, Jamel would always counter with vicious hooks, uppercuts, hooks to the body. When I was watching the very first round, I said, this is going to be Jamel Charlo's left hook versus Brian Castaño's right hand. And it was the left hook that ended up ultimately knocking out Brian Castaño. At least that was the beginning of the end. Brian Castaño, he kept coming forward, but it was kind of like sticking his head in a meat grinder. Because every time he came forward, every time he got in range to throw punches, Brian was getting chopped up. Now, he did have some success a couple of rounds, but even the rounds where Brian Castaño did good, those were more like swing rounds that could have went either way. Around the sixth or the seventh round, that's when Jamel, he just started taking over the fight completely. Jamel started to keep the fight a little bit more in the center of the ring, and it wasn't just because of Jamel, it was also because Brian was slowing down from once again getting chopped up. Brian, he had a very tough task because once again, every time he got where he needed to get to start landing or throwing his punches, he was taking way more punches than he was dishing out. In the first fight, Brian was winning a lot of the exchanges when Jamel's back was against the ropes. In the rematch, Charlo, he was winning the exchanges while his back was on the ropes and he was winning the exchanges when the fight was in the center of the ring. Guys, Jamel Charlo is a special fighter. He is a throwback fighter. I mean, this man can do it all. I mean, the type of adversity that he had to deal with in both of these fights, and then to end the two fights by stopping Brian Castaño, it's a hell of a statement. You know, I find it rather ironic that Brian Castaño, he's wearing a Mexican flag on his trunks. I believe he had a Mexican flag on one side and an Argentina flag on the other side. But when they did the press conference, and Jamel Charlo chanted USA, USA, you could clearly see that that chant made Brian Castaño uncomfortable because he said immediately, I wanna make this very clear guys, this is not USA versus Argentina. But that's exactly what it was. An Argentine fighter with fans that are waving an Argentine flag going up against the American boxer. That is exactly what it was. Unless Brian Castaño meant to say Hey guys, this is not USA versus Argentina. This is USA versus Mexico and Argentina. Maybe that's what he meant. But nevertheless, USA once again gets the job done and continues to be the most dominant force in the sport of boxing.
And trainer Derek James, he did a fantastic job coming up with the game plan to stop Brian Castaño in the rematch. He is definitely trainer of the year. Let's see if they have the same energy when they was handing out trainer of the year to Eddie Reynoso like it was going out of business. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called Elo De Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling and inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to elodekey.com, like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Man, how does this change your life, man? <laughs> I just didn't scratch that, but it's been good. It's been good. I like the look. I like the feel. Uh, I feel more confident now. You know, and um, uh, it was um, money well spent to this point. Cool. Now, in terms of the response, what has been people said like guys, as, as um, people being like, "Hey, you know, what do you have on your head?" or things uh, that I saw. The most response I get is like, "Yo, what bar do you go to?" And I didn't get you know such a close shave, but you know everything lined up. So sharp and everything, and you know, then I go into explain it to them the procedure of what I had done and everything. You know, they always like, I would never know it if you had to Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man Scalp Carolinas on Instagram.